Talking about leak detectors and the different types and which ones are really good for you and been doing an experiment over the last month and it's really kind of shaped my opinion. Uh, I really kind of lean towards a more, I guess, traditional old school kind of thought process for a long time. The testing I've done has really caused me to really think about how I'm using a leak detector and what I should really recommend as we move forward in this industry. So let's start with this. Uh, you can go to say like True Tech Tools or uh, uh, Brian Orr's website, HVAC School, and they kind of explain the differences in some of the types of leak detectors. The two most common we deal with on a day-to-day -day is either a heated diode or an infrared. The infrareds are a lot more expensive, but for good reason, but they're not perfect either. And I don't think that they completely replace a heated diode. I want to explain the difference between a heated diode and what the infrared does really quick. The little device inside of there, that is the diode. And these specifically are looking for uh, trace elements of chlorine or, or fluorine in the refrigerant. So almost all the refrigerants we use right now have one or the other. They, they do have heavy concentrations of either chlorine or fluorine, and that makes a diode really effective. A big issue people have with these is there's different concentrations of chlorine and fluorine in different refrigerants. So for example, R22 is much easier to register with a heated diode than a 4, than 410A is. And even on centrifugal chillers, that's why they tell us if we're gonna do a pressure test and, and do a leak search, use R22 for trace gas. We've had some experience with this this summer. We've had some trouble finding some leaks on some 410A systems. And what we ended up doing is we just put some R22 in those systems as a trace gas, pressurized them, and we ended up finding those leaks that way using a heated diode leak detector, like the Infocon, for example. What makes an infrared or an IR leak detector different is it's actually measuring how much of the infrared light, the gases that are flowing in front of the sensor are absorbing. So that's pretty consistent in terms of refrigerants are pretty good absorbers of infrared light. At that point, we're not looking for a specific molecule. We're actually just looking for the gases and their ability to absorb that light. As that happens, the detector starts to detect how much light is being absorbed, which indicates how strong the signal is and it's gonna light up on the, on the display. The great thing about IR technology is it's very consistent across refrigerants. It doesn't have an issue where it reads one refrigerant a lot better than others, like a heated diode does. But the caveat, and what a lot of people don't understand is you cannot let a infrared sit still at any given time. You have to keep the sensor constantly moving in a swaying pattern. And what they'll do is if you end up trying to hone in and pinpoint like you would traditionally do with a heated diode, that sensor is gonna recalibrate itself to the gas that's moving in front of it and it's not gonna register that refrigerant the same. And so you'll start to get a hit on what you're looking for and then all of a sudden it, it goes away and it's, there's nothing there. You'll go back away from it for a little bit and try to search somewhere else and then come back to that point and all of a sudden you start picking up again. And that's because uh, you you let that, that tip of the sensor uh, stop moving and that allowed it to recalibrate improperly. Where a heated diode, that's not really the case. You don't really wanna swing a heated diode in that way. You can be a lot more consistent and when you hone in with a heated diode, you can actually hone in directly to the point of where the refrigerant leak is. And it's, it's, you can pinpoint it a little easier, but it's more challenging when you're trying to find a leak in a large area. And IR will help hone in on where the leak is. And at that point, you could either use something like a heated diode uh, if you wanted a real specific point, because you might have trouble. It's not impossible, but you might have trouble finding the exact point because of the constant motion of the tip that you need to have. Or you could just switch over and use some big blue from refrigeration technology, something like that and you're gonna hone, you're gonna be able to find that leak that way without any trouble. I made the comment earlier that I've kind of started to shift my thought process on leak detectors and the style and design and such. I've really honed in on the heated diode with the TechMate specifically. I found that the IR has a big place and there's good reason that it is more expensive and why so many people are going to it. Infocon has their DTEC3, which is an infrared sensor. That's a good one I can recommend. And I have technicians who have that one. I've used that one myself. I have really enjoyed that one. And a lot of people make the claim that the DTEC3 really competes with the H10, which nowadays is the H10 Pro. Uh, the original H10 is 
I, by a lot of people's standards, it was a lot better than the Pro. Anyway, not here to talk about that. Field Piece has also come out with a very strong one with the DR82. Uh, HVACR videos, I've seen him using that one quite a bit. And that, uh, I haven't got to put my hands on that one, but just from what I've seen online and reading about it, that is one that I would feel very comfortable purchasing and knowing that I'm gonna get a solid product. Field Piece makes really good products. Both at Inficon and the DTEC are on True Tech Tools. If you're ever interested, you can go check them out there. I will have links to all of these things down in the description if you wanna go check them out, use those links. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I don't have any coupon codes through True Tech Tools like I can offer or anything like that. So this is a genuine personal opinion of mine. This is not being influenced by anybody else. I don't know if you're familiar with a brand called Ellie Tech, but they did send me their IR200 leak detector. And I will say that this very much surprised me. Now, before I get into the leak detector, I do want to say that companies like Ellie Tech, and they're just one of them, there's another one also known as X Tech, I believe. Those companies have a place. And in the same way that you can get some affordable stuff through like Amazon that are off brand, you can do the same thing with somebody like Ellie Tech. The very first leak detector I ever got was actually an Ellie Tech. I forget the model number, I'll put it here on the screen where you can see it but it actually turned out to be a fantastic leak detector and it helped me take a huge step in being able to take my leak detection game to a whole nother level and it helped me jump some really big hurdles until I got to where I can invest in a more legitimate leak detector that was recognized by the industry and by customers. Am I gonna put these products on par with Field Piece and with Inficon and with some of these others? No, I think that would be taking it a little too far. But I will tell you that if you're wanting a really good investment, that you're gonna get a strong return on your investment without having to completely break the bank, especially for you younger guys who need something that can take you to another level without costing most of your entire paycheck, I would heavily encourage consider as a stepping stone tool, things like what Ellie Tech offers. For example, this leak detector is just shy of $300. The Inficon and the field piece I mentioned earlier, both of those are around 450 on the market. So it's $150 plus savings. And I've spent about a month with this thing and I've used it on a few different jobs, some centrifugal stuff, some RTU stuff. And I've actually been really impressed with it. Uh, I've, I've given it to some of my technicians, let them run around with it, let them try it out. And they have actually absolutely loved this thing. I'm not gonna go through all the spec sheet or any of that. I'll put all that over here on the side of the screen so you can check that out on your own. But overall, I feel completely comfortable recommending this. This is a infrared leak detector, but it also has a built-in diode. So it's technically both. It is a heated diode and an infrared built into one. One of my techs loved it so much, he was actually gonna go buy the Inficon. And after getting to use this, and he's used the TechMate before, he's actually decided that he wanted to go buy this one instead. What he doesn't know yet is I'm actually going to give him this one. He does a really good job for me. He's a wonderful tech. He's grown so much over the last couple of years. So this one that's in my hand is actually going to go to him once I'm done making this video and all that. There's a lot of guys out there who will very much disagree with my approach and my thought on this and just being willing to accept cheaper brands and brands that, you know, they're not trying to compete at the same level of say field piece or fluke or Inficon. And heck, there's a, a lot of those same technicians that you know, they'll hear me say field piece and they'll scoff at that because at one time field piece wasn't what they are today. A lot of those guys still have a stigma that they're not the company that they actually are and they do produce industry leading products at this point. But for a lot of you guys out there, $150 difference means absolutely everything because there's a lot you can do with $150 and get other affordable tools that are gonna help you continue to take major steps in your career and in this industry. So don't get hung up in the hype that you have to spend all the money for the best thing up front the first time. Because also keep this in mind, every one of these tools have a lifespan, including leak detectors. And this is not a one-time buy. You're gonna own numerous leak detectors throughout your career, just like you're gonna own numerous meters. If you're using it heavily and on a consistent basis, and it is a, a routine tool for you, they're gonna wear out, they're gonna wear down. 
heated diodes, a lot of them, you're doing good to get 100 hours out of them. You have to replace the diode every so many hours. If you don't, it's not gonna read properly. At the same time, infrared sensors go a lot longer. They can get up to 1,000 plus hours in a lot of cases. Consider your options wisely. There's a lot of choices you can make and there's a lot of tools that are gonna really help benefit your career in the long run. And there's a lot of them that probably won't. Always keep in mind the ROI, return on investment, and how far is this tool gonna to help you go? And how much is it gonna help you propel yourself in your career versus how much is it gonna cost you to get? Appreciate you guys, really love all the support. MTT, make the time for your family. If there's any other tools or any other products you like my thoughts on, feel free to just put them in the comments. I'll look into them and see if I can do some more videos like this about it. In the meantime, stay safe. I'll catch y'all around.